You just know instantly that you've done it because I've done it two times before. So you just feel this popping, like, disgusting feeling and, and all the hard work you've done just comes down just with one movement. Sometimes I thought I'd never play again because I sort of thought I'd keep doing it. You don't want to let the people down that sort of around you all the time. So I didn't tell my parents or Hannah like, until the afternoon. I sort of, I went to the movies by myself. It was sort of weird. I didn't want to tell anyone and I had to wait around for an MRI. Grew up playing footy around the Shire, played for De La Salle and um, started playing with the Sharks rep teams. I played SG Bourne and Harrod Mats and so I did my first um, ACL injury when I was in under 20s. So I played first four games that season and just jumping to catch a ball and yeah, my knee just buckled and had an eight month rehab and then um, I was training with the Sharks full time in the preseason. I went to jump again and same thing happened, pretty much exactly the same thing, buckled again and so that sort of year I was off contract and that's when Richo and the Sharks were both having combos with me and I thought I'd come to South just, just with the squad they had and the sort of culture and history around Rabbitohs. I thought they had a real good team and looked like I had a real close brotherhood and sort of players they had coming through, I thought it'd be a good club to come to. And it came to South and I was in the middle of my second rehab and I was sort of doing some training with the physio, trying to get my knee right. Went to step off it and then did it again for the third time. So obviously done it three times in training two times. So it was devastating and had to get bone marrow to fill the holes because I'd had two previous surgeries. So had to have someone's donated bone put into my knee and had to wait three months for that to heal. So for three months, I couldn't really do anything. I had no ACL in my knee, so I was sort of waiting around, just, just doing nothing. And then I eventually had the ACL surgery and it was um, probably more evasive surgery than my last two. So it took a lot longer to recover from. So I was in a brace for a while, and but it took our time. It was probably about 15 months since I, till I played again after that one. So I really had a long time to get it right. And, Sometimes I thought I'd never play again because I sort of thought I'd keep doing it, but um, I can't thank the Rabbitoh staff enough, Jared Wade, Luke, Eddie, all the physios and all the players as well, how supportive they were. So they made it real easy to sort of come back from it. CT's attitude to training second to none at this club. Um, he came to us um, with previous long-term injuries and then he picked up one in his first year here. So we've really seen that whole process um, from him from the early stage of dealing with that injury into early stage rehab, which requires a lot of attention and focus, all the way through his running when he's returning to his rehab and, and his uh, willingness and ability to push himself to the wall every time that he trains, basically. So it sort of comes in two parts with Connor. On, once he's on the field, he, he pushes himself to the wall and that's why he's sort of built himself back up into, into a really good player through this rehab process. On the outside, looked like he was handling it really well. Um, I'm sure he had some dark times when he was on his own and, and the like, um, but he had a lot of good support. He had a lot of good support from, from both the Sharks and the Rabbitohs. And um, I suppose one thing that I, I did admire, admire when he was going through it is he just got on with things, you know, didn't really look at, look at it as a setback. It was just, okay, this has happened. What are we going to do next? And just got on with it, business as usual. So. Um, that was that was pretty impressive, I thought. Yeah, he never really, he never spoke about it, just on the move, what's next, kind of just, yeah, looking for things to do to keep him occupied. He would become an extremist in like a random hobby. So he would, you know, whether it be droning or fishing or he'd pick a country and he'd have to go there and or a meal that he'd have to perfect, like he would just become an extremist in a hobby, which was, I guess, he was always busy kind of distracting himself. When he did his first knee that night, he got on to Gumtree and found a tinny and went out the next day and bought it. And um, that was when his fishing really, really yeah, that's right. took yeah. off. Yeah. It was the first right thing he thought, right, I'm gonna buy a boat. I hadn't had a boat for a while. I used to have a boat when I was young, about 14, 15. So that night I thought, I'm gonna buy a boat. So I went on Gumtree, looked up Tinny, found a little Tinny. Next day I went and picked it up. And then yeah, I pretty much became obsessed with fishing. I'd go out every day because I couldn't do much with my knee. I'd sort of train in the morning and then fish like every afternoon and sort of put my passion for my rugby league into fishing and sort of got real good at it and started catching big fish and 
still something I keep doing, but it's more so to get away from footy now as opposed to fill the void and footy not being able to play left. So it's changed a bit. Hand net skills when your net breaks. <laughs> I can't believe that. Put the small hooks on for the broom. <laughs> the other one was like just legal. So I let this one go. Come forward right here. That's how you catch a kingy. <laughs> 